In this video, we will look into Liquibase. We will see that how Liquibase uh, can be integrated in uh, in any application basically. Uh, here, what I am going to do is that I will show you how it has been integrated into this uh, REST API server skeleton that uh, and the code source code is actually in this GitHub. You can follow this tutorial to figure out the details. But uh, for this particular video, we will focus on the Liquibase. What is Liquibase? Liquibase is basically a database schema management system. I, if you remembered like, uh, or if you might be using that one, so how do we build our schema? So there are many strategies, but normal one is that we write a schema file and then we write the updates file uh, as, as, as we go to the newer versions of the applications. And uh, th there are also these things that the up updates are written in such a way that even if the update happens multiple times, uh, even then it should uh, it, it should do the intended effect or there are like you just write the incremental files and it will just run the incremental files. What Liquibase has done is that Liquibase has actually uh, put a framework in place which handles all this stuff pretty nicely. Uh, what we will see here is how Liquibase does that. So to uh, give the support to uh, to provide the support for Liquibase you need to add uh, basically the dependency in the build.gradle. So if I go back here, let's just confirm it with the source code also. So here I have added the Liquibase uh, dependencies. Then what you do is that in the application.properties, you basically give the location to a Liquibase change log file, which is, uh, if I see here, it is sitting out here. What is a change log file? A change log file is a place where Liquibase will look into to figure out what all the change set to be applied. We'll look into what is a change set. Let's first look into this Liquibase change log XML file, which is sitting out here. Uh, so uh, that is the uh, that is the way it is written. Uh, let, let's now look into the Eclipse uh, only. So here the Liquibase change log file is there. And here we include each of the, uh, uh, there are other uh, XML files which actually contain the change sets. So the change sets, if you see this location change log 000 initial.xml, this file is sitting out here. I open this one and you will see a set of uh, definitions out here. It's very easy to read. Uh, you look into this change set, this is the starting point. And this chain set would basically uh, be, uh, so there are two chain sets out here that I have put. So in the first chain set, what I have got is, I am first creating a sequence and then I am creating a table. Nothing fancy. If you see, you can easily relate everything. So the sequence name, what is the name, what is the, should be the minimum value, uh, etc. Then the table name, uh, what is the table name? Uh, and then the columns, so the column name. Uh, let's look into one more table. So let's say that you have created a sequence for users, the users table. So we have the users table here, the column name, which the type is big int. Uh, it takes the next uh, value of the primary key using the sequence, which is defined here. And then you put the constraints and tell that it is a primary key. Another column name is first name. Uh, similarly, it goes like that. So this is the first chain set. Uh, just to give you a reference of uh, how the foreign keys would look like. Yeah, so somewhere here you see I have put a constraint and there is a foreign key name which references the ID of the users. And then how to insert the data. So this is the another chain set. So it tells that insert into users, the first name, last name, the other details like this. And it will automatically pick the primary key because we have told it to pick the primary key using the sequence. So once you do this one, uh, then you just have to run your server. What happens is that now if you want to define a new chain set or uh, like you want to define. So for example, one release has gone. And now you want to extend your data model. So what you should do, you always have to define a new chain set. Never touch your older chain set because it Aliquibase works on checksum and if any changes you do, uh, it will actually run into trouble. So uh, if you have to define a new one, you just go here and define a, a new set of chain sets out here. I will not do that right now. 
but it hopefully should give an idea. Now what happens? The moment I will run the application, so for example here I have already run the server. Uh, okay, I think uh, yes. So the moment I'll run the server, I'll not do that right now, but I'll just show you through the database what happens. You'll see that what Liquibase does in the first run, it will generate these two files. Out of that, uh, this log file is important. Let's look into what this uh, log file contains. So if I do select star from database change log. So you see, we had got two chain sets and it has basically put those two chain sets out here. Uh, so you would see this uh, as a email because when I ran it, uh, my author name was with the email, but right now you would have noticed that it's just with name. So don't worry about that one. It's just like, it was like that before, but otherwise you would see that the first chain set and it has sequence. So th this is the chain set that actually you see all the details out here. And uh, then there is the another chain set and you will see again the details out here. Uh, so uh, that's that's how it will. So whenever you apply a new chain set, it will keep coming out here and it maintains an MDI, MD5 checksum also. Uh, so so yeah, so that, that's what you have to be careful about. And then the log, log file is actually nothing. What happens is that whenever you start your server, and whenever Liquibase kicks in to figure out the schema changes, it actually takes the lock so that uh, simultaneous uh, Liquibase changes don't start applying. So the Liquibase only which has got the lock will actually uh, start uh, uh, managing the changes out here. So hopefully this should give you an idea about uh, how to use Liquibase. You can go to the Liquibase website. It's uh, it has a lot of details. It's it's uh, it's it's yeah you you can get uh, like uh, all sort of things that you can do with liquibase out here okay thank you very much hopefully this shit is useful and thanks for your patience